on my phone. They look funny. What's up, soil brothers and soil sisters? Y'all, I decided to pop up and go laugh. So, I hope everyone is having an amazing Monday. Today is Monday. <laughs> this is not your average herbal medicinal Monday chat, but we're going to chat about some tea. While I'm making tea, I said, I might as well go live. And I am live, I think, on Facebook and YouTube. I am YouTube. Hey, Shawnee, I miss y'all. So good morning, or is it morning? Hello, Facebook and YouTube. I hope y'all are having a great Monday. Greener grass grows. What's up, GT Jr.? What's up, Soyo family? So I was, well, Bobby asked for some tea. So I decided I might as well go live while I'm making tea. And of course, I'm trying to stream to two different platforms. So, but I appreciate y'all for being here. Um, forgot how to spell your name. Come on, GT. <laughs> We've been going that long. We ain't been going that long. We ain't been going that long. You got it right though. Hey, hey, soil sister. How you doing, Kayla? So the first tea I'm gonna make is go to cola. And I'm actually making two two different teas right now. I'm going to make go to cola, which is great. And y'all know I'm always going to refer you back to Mr. Google Pants or the herbal book of Methison. Um, Go to cola. So Bobby loves go to cola. Long as I make it, he'll sip on it every day. So I may have to make this like once a week for him. Um, thank y'all for hitting the thumbs up for me. But go to Cola. You can grow it. You can purchase it already dried. Um, we are growing it. It's fairly simple to grow. They love water. Plants love water. So you always got to make sure like your soil is saturated in water. And they're pretty happy. Um, however, to make tea, it's so simple. We don't add any honey sugar or anything to our tea now that's bobby's preference so hey milk and honey in this book they also talk about the go to polar herb so it's good for brain function it's good for so many other things but it's good it's great for brain function so to make this tea it's simple just going to Get me a little bag, and I use these little tea bags. What's up, Al T smoking? So, what have y'all been up to? Are y'all ready for phone? It felt like winter this morning when we woke up. Like I got on a whole jogging suit because I'm freezing. G, hey J3, my back is like, girl, it's cold. So I put a good amount in my bags, because I don't want him to have no weak tea. We got to keep that brain popping. So I don't measure how much I put in there. And these have a drawstring. So I just pat and pull it so that my herbs don't come out. Drop it in. So I put his tea in this flask because or this, this, um, it's chilly in Alabama. Oh my God. It was cold here. Hey, so we'll call it drop in, drop in real quick. Wanted to see how things are going. Pretty good. We got a leaky roof, but you know, I ain't complaining. <laughs> it's cold. Now I'm complaining about that. It's cold, but we're doing good. So I got this thing on um, for my birthday. And let me tell you, this will keep your liquids hot for like three days. <laughs> and I have boiling water here. This is probably two cups of hot boiling water. I just dropped my tea bag with the Gota Cola in it in. Smells so good. Hey, Amarilla. 
How you doing? Y'all know Amirla got all the good stuff over there. I ain't going to say don't tell nobody, but you should tell everybody. They got all our garden bench travel around the yard all the time, but their garden tools, the best. I did have them from Bobby. Now we have go to cola tea again, which is good. It's cold in um, North Carolina, Ronnie. Great for brain health. Go to cola is spelled G O T U K O L A. So look into go to cola. Great for the brain. So now he got tea for the week. He can just sip and go. Keep his brain sharp. Next. So we got go to cola out the way. Next, y'all know what we've been doing. Harvesting sorrel. Sorrel, Jamaican hibiscus, Jamaican tea, brosella, however you want to call it. XDMC. What's up, soil brother? So next we're gonna make some um hibiscus tea. So I got I don't know what I was thinking. Can you grow your own scoby? Yes, you can. We're going to talk about that in a second. So I'm just going to drop some of this, um, a handful of this in my water because I got like, I probably got about seven or eight cups of water back here. So I can get his tea going and I won't do anything to this until they cool off. Well, I ain't gonna say anything. However, once the tea is ready, I'll bottle it up. Once it cool off, I'll put some honey in it, put it in the refrigerator. Bobby can drink it when he wants to. So, let's talk about kombucha. Baby, something in this white bucket in here? I keep putting stuff on it. So y'all, Bobby was in the kitchen last night. Bobby was in the kitchen last night. Brewing something. What do you have for tired legs? So for restless legs, like restless leg syndrome, it's so many things. Um, send me a message, Ronnie. DM me on Facebook, and I send you some herbs for restless leg syndrome. So for kombucha, so we got hibiscus going. We're gonna talk about kombucha. So you can grow your own scoby, and I did grow our scoby. Um, I did grow our scoby. So what I did was I purchased a. Uh, Let's see the herb book. I purchased a plain scoby from Walmart. Look at the herb book for you. Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. This is my go-to book for everything. And then I go to the other ones for recipes and formulas and all this other stuff like this. So all of these herb books to me are great. Some of them might repeat themselves, but it's still good. Um, I did grow on scoby from scratch. So you got that book? That's a good one, GT. So to grow your scoby from scratch, all you need is tea, black tea, or green tea. You can use black tea or green tea to make your own scoby. So when you first start it, you want to make a strong tea, which I just I use black tea. I just get the Lipton's. I, I mean, I don't even think it really got to be nothing. It needs to be organic. Organic <laughs> tea. So I use black tea. That's the black tea I've been using since I started making scoby. I make about a gallon of black tea. And then I take that, um, I can't even think of the name of it. Any plain scoby, 
you don't want a flavored scoby. You just want plain, I mean, plain kombucha. You don't want a flavored kombucha. I take that kombucha and when my tea cool off, I pour the entire bottle of kombucha in with my tea. And then I cover it up. I put it in a glass jar and I got this in a big jar. Yeah, Rambo, you need that book. What's up, Rambo? I put it in a glass jar. I cover it up with um, like this towel. And I keep it out of direct sunlight. So it sit back over in this corner back here. That's my scoby corner. I got jars and stuff over there brewing. So you just let it sit um, and your scoby will grow now. Every time you make kombucha, guess what? You're going to get a new scoby. I have been lazy here lately with the kombucha. This was supposed to have been kombucha, but it's been sitting so long. It's probably so strong. Bobby ain't going to drink this. But it's still good. And I got like three scobies in here. So I'm going to wash my hands and pull one out. But it's still good to make scobies with or make uh, kombucha with. GT join you to switch platforms. So I used to be freaked out about this scoby thing. I used to be freaked out about it. I thought it was like weird. But the benefits, you know, of drinking kombucha are amazing. So we need, we all, as we age gracefully, we all need things to help us stay moving like well oiled machines. We want to keep, keep it going. So it's the little things that count, you know. Growing your own groceries is a huge thing. That help in itself in so many ways. We think just eating um, healthy vegetables or homegrown vegetables that you know are not treated all kinds of ways. We think that's it. You know, I'm eating, I'm growing my own groceries. But we don't realize how many benefits come from growing your own food. You're going out there. Um, that's how my scoby look. It's been sitting a bit. Yeah, you just got to keep feeding it so it can stay healthy. But other than that, you don't have to do anything to them. But um, so many benefits in gardening or growing your own groceries other than consuming the best food, such as the exercise, just moving around, you know, going out there, stooping down and, and playing in the garden, playing in the dirt is grounding you itself. But moving, all that stooping and, and bending and Twisting, that's that's great exercise that we need to do, especially as we get older. What's up, snails? Snails, I've been trying to watch your lives. They always private. What's up, snails and God? Um, but it's a documentary on Netflix about aging, getting older, and that's what they talked about. How in their nineties and hundreds, they still get out there and weed in the garden, they stooping and bending and, and moving. So you know, you can thank the garden for a whole lot of things, such as keeping us moving. But drinking kombucha is good for the uh, broken. They don't work. I don't get it. Oh, man. We got to figure that out, snails. Um, kombucha is good for your joints. It's good for your digestive system. You know, all things fermented are good for the belly. As long as you don't overdo it. <laughs> don't overdo it. You can't overdo it. Immune system antioxidants and detoxing, boosting your energy, so many things. So look into the benefits of kombucha because it's tons of them. And honestly, I don't care for the kombucha in the store at all. At all. But when I make our kombucha, it's a whole new ball game. I can flavor it with our fruit. Um, I put freeze-dried fruit in our kombucha last time. Oh, my God. It was good. And I use honey. Like, your, when you flavor it with fruit, and we try to use fresh fruit. When we flavor in our um, kombucha, you, use, you add some sugar to it, and the yeast will eat it up. So it's not like you're just drinking a sugary drink. 
because they, it'll be eaten up. But instead of using sugar, I use honey, and it's so good. I'm selling off mad fruit trees. I'm in a bad spot. Okay, um, Snails, we're going to call you in a little while. I'll call you when Bobby got time to talk. So when I make a new scoby, like I'm going to clean this out. Just wash my hands because I wanted to show y'all. How I clean this thing out. This is my brewing vessel. This big one is my brewing vessel. This small one is my Scoby Hotel. This is where they live all they like. So they do take shape to whatever type of vessel you put them in. And unfortunately, I've been putting it in this big thing. So, of course, it's taking shape to this big, wide container, which is okay. But I'm going to move it right now over to the smaller container. And this liquid that's in here is good to feed. my hotel. So that's how you keep it healthy. Do you ship to other states? Uh, yeah, Shawnee, he shipped to other states. He shipped to other states. So I think I could depend. Okay. All right, Snail. Yeah, so Snail's in garden. He is a tropical fruit grower. Not I ain't gonna say tropical, exotic fruit grower down in West Palm. We have visited him a few times. We do have a few videos. If you want to check it out on the type of things he grow, but he don't have a website. So you'll probably have to send me a message, um, Shawnee. Gut tastes so good. It do. It do. Hey, Cena Renee. So now I have a healthy, I mean, my, my SCOBY hotel is healthy anyway. But all I did was add the SCOBY from my brewing vessel to my hotel and I added some of the liquids from here because that liquid will feed what's in here. And I left some. I know I said clean it out, but I don't mean clean it, clean it out. So I left some in here. So once I get my tea prepared, and I'm going to tell you how I'm going to prepare that, all I have to do is wait for it to cool off, pour it in here. I can choose to put a scoby in here. But if I just add the tea to it, cover it up, set it out the way, in 10 days, I'll have another scoby. So every time you make kombucha, you'll, you'll get a new scoby. Hey, Fresh and Fire, so glad you're doing this live. Ooh, I was scared of kombucha. Salon Diva, what's up, Soil Sister? So you don't have to have, well, I don't have to have a scoby to start a new scoby or to start kombucha because it'll start from this. I could just let this sit in 10 days. I have a new scoby, but I'm gonna add my tea to this, and this will be my brewing vessel so we can um I can bottle up some to set it aside. Hey Sue, what's up, girl? So right now though, I'm just gonna set this to the side. I'm going to show y'all how easy it is to make kombucha, uh, kombucha, nice size jar. Where did you get that? So one of these jars, let me tell you the easiest way to get a jar. I don't know if you eat pickles or can find something to do with them. Try it once and it got funky. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> we going to work on that. How's your apothecary? It's great, snails. It's great. So I'm going to move this to the side. Um, I do have some scobies I can get rid of. So if y'all need scobies, y'all make sure y'all hit me up. Uh, that way you don't have to start a scoby. Because I got a few. A couple to a few. What is a scoby? It's a living organism or something. I can't really explain it. <laughs> I can't really explain it to you. But this is what it looked like. It's a little weird. 
I'm gonna pull. Well, I'm, I'll take it out before. This thing is full of scobies. All of this solid material. These are scobies. It's just some healthy living bacteria that help keep the gut healthy. So I pull that out in a minute. But right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my teeth. So make right now we're gonna make I'm gonna bottle up some um <laughs> scoby. I, I used to be so afraid. I'm like, oh my god, why would anybody drink that? Then I bought one and I was like, oh, that's disgusting. Why would I mean that it's disgusting to me. But then I made it and I was like, oh, that's not bad now. You can't ferment it too long, it'll taste like beer. So it won't turn into vinegar, but it smells like vinegar. I mean, my neighbor, she said, Scoby, I mean, when you make kombucha, ain't nothing but vinegar inside. I said, ain't no, no vinegar in this. It's all tea. No vinegar. But it will ferment and smell like vinegar. This is just hibiscus, though. Making Bobby some tea. So hibiscus is very easy. Just simply boil the fruit and drink it. So I won't fill this all the way up. I'll just go almost to the top, but I'll leave room for honey later. So that's about good. That's enough for him to drink in a day. Is that like ginger drink? So I do sometimes I do um put ginger in here, but this is just straight up at this is And I fill up all these containers like that. Then we'll make some tea for us kombucha. I don't know why I like doing stuff when it's like extremely hot, but I can't help it. Somebody was saying the other day when I was making, um, hey, lit soaps, <laughs> when I was making cough drops and I was pouring that hot concoction in that little tube. I said, I don't know why I don't wait for things to cool off a little bit, but. I got this, y'all. So I can make one more. So my kombucha bottles, are, um, these are 12 ounce bottles. And I used to make kombucha in this, but now I make kombucha in four ounce bottles. All right, so. I'm gonna take that same pot that I just made my Sorrow in. <laughs> so 
So to make um so now we're gonna make our tea for our kombucha. And I'm gonna make my tea for my kombucha. Now this is a 10-day process. Once you have a scoby, it's a 10-day process from there. <laughs> It's Halloween soon, I know. I don't think we're dressing up this year. We usually dress up, but not this year. So all I have is my pot. I'm going to add eight cups of water to this. It doesn't matter if it's hot or cold because you're going to boil it anyway. So I'm going to cut my stove on high. This is four cups. Better yet. I'm going to put 12 cups in here because I'm going to add some water to it later. Now, they say you should use spring water or filtered water or boil this water anyway. So it's okay. If you got a purification system, great. So that's 12 cups. So my pot, I'm gonna put it on the stove. Turn it on high. I'm gonna let that come to a bowl. G mama grows. What's up, girl? You gotta make some butterfly pea. Blue butterfly pea. I love that stuff. Oh my God. I've been freeze drying all the blue butterfly peas. By the way, y'all, we do have soap for sale. I know some of y'all have purchased soap. Don't fuss at me on Fresh and Fire. <laughs> some of y'all have purchased soap and shine, but we now have soap available and for sale. I don't have any up here with me, but we do have soap available. So, for kombucha, I'm only using black tea. I just put 12 cups of water on the stove. I'm going to let it come to a boil. I'm going to add nine tea bags to that. Once I turn it off, I'm going to add nine tea bags. I like my tea pretty strong. Nine. Nine to ten tea bags. I haven't used soap in many years, but I like to give people soap. Not sure if they think I'm telling them to shower or not. Well, soap is a good gift. I mean, honestly. And if it's homemade, it's really good because mine is the junk. So I think soap is a good gift. I'm sure they appreciate it. I'm going to run and get, get um, two bars of soap in a minute. So y'all can see. I wish y'all could smell it. Well, so we um, we don't make our soaps to be strongly scented. You like strong tea too? Hey, she is sunshine. Our soaps don't have a, a strong scent. They do have a mild scent, which we think is pleasant. But we think about the people with sensitive, that have sensitivity to smell. Use soil for soap. I know you do snails. So those are my tea bags. Once my water boil, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna throw these in there for about 10 minutes and um, basically let them steep. After they steep, I'll take the tea bags out and I'll set my tea up here probably for, for a few hours because I want it to, um, hey, Miss Linda, I want my tea to cool off to room temperature. If you add, if you add your tea to your um, kombucha or your scoby to this and it's too hot, it's, it's going to kill your scoby. Do you have a list of what you are selling anyway? I, let me tell you, I've been working 
strong tea for yeah you want your tea strong for kombucha i've been working on a website but y'all like sometimes i i make life too busy for us you know we did a lot of traveling over the summer and then now we got this hole in the roof um our truck went down so we've been shopping for trucks y'all know semis are not cheap to fix or to purchase however we good so we're in the process of um we got to pr purchase a new truck the roof is leaking it's crazy waiting on the insurance company we started our soap line um we sold out of a lot of stuff <laughs> a lot of stuff and trying to stay active on these platforms it's a lot of work not including a one acre homestead and trying to help people local soil family expo like and then taking care of myself bobby the dogs it, we have been racing fire what's up we have been doing a lot twenty five hundred dollar repair for my vehicle look add another zero on there for us so we just been doing stuff around the house you know i'm glad bobby home because we can get some stuff done so we're working on a full one acre suburban homestead tour but um you know it's a lot and soil family expo is coming so we have to work on things by a certain amount of time for soil family expo so we'll start updating that website give you all new information um dinner reservations you know Email me, GT Junior. I, I got to talk to Bobby about shampoo ginger, but I may have, I may have shampoo ginger. So let me run and get so uh, what is boiling. I'm gonna turn it off. Nala, Nala babysit her daddy all day. She looking at me like what? So the um, we you you know we use our I, we did explain this in our last soap in our first soap video. Um, I know the pain of big truck. Ooh, my goodness, but we are blessed. So I have absolutely no complaints, Jake Reed. You know, some a lot of truck drivers they make great money, great money, but they don't know how to balance things out. Their overhead exceed what they make. Then when they have an issue, it totally blow them away because they can't afford to live and repair their truck or get themselves back on the road. We don't have that issue. We just want to make the right decision. Do we fix this truck or do we buy a new truck? So we found out that, yeah, it's time to move on. But this is honey turmeric banana soap. You see our stamp on there? You might be able to see it. So we stamp all of our soap. But what I love about our products is we grow our own honey. Um, we grow our own bees. So we use our honey, which is all organic. We use our, um, hey, Kim Stage. We use our own turmeric and we use our own banana blossoms. All, and we always say, do your research on these, these um, products. Turmeric, honey, banana blossoms, blue butterfly pea. Um, what else do we use? Shampoo, ginger. Do your own research on the benefits for the skin. It's amazing. So we formulated um, a concoction for our soaps. And we came up with this honey turmeric banana soap. We have not named our scent yet, which we had to come up with also. So I'm not sure what we call this scent. But this reminds us of, of something that we would love. It's mild, but it's nice. So I haven't packaged this one yet. 
no two soaps will ever look the same. That's honey turmeric banana. This is probably my favorite. This is blue butterfly. Blue butterfly, honey turmeric soap. Oh my God, y'all. This soap smells so good. But it's so beautiful. <laughs> so do you have a link for where you got your stamp? I don't have a link. I, I'll look it up and I'll I'll put it in um in this chat when it's over. Black tropical for scent. I know. I don't know. So we were trying to wait for some more people. People have ordered and I was waiting to make sure they got their soap so they could help us with naming it. But yeah, the blue butterfly is gorgeous. Maybe call it monkey business for the bananas. Hmm. And you know what? Um, Lord, I love the scent. You ever smell monkey fart? <laughs> it's a scent called monkey fart. Oh my God. It smells so good. Monkey business. You hear that, babe? Babe, uh -huh. you hear that? What's that? <laughs> they said monkey business for the um honey turmeric banana soap. <laughs> because of the banana. That's smart. But yeah, monkey fart. It smells so good. I used to love getting the um little melts I could put in my diffuser. Smells so good. So I have my tea back there and um all right, snails. We're gonna hit you up, snails. I'll make sure I drop the the company we got this stamp from. She is great. We found this on Etsy and hmm, with love. Hmm. GT Junior, he ain't never smelled monkey fart. <laughs> it smells so good. It's just like when Bobby say, "Who, who thought to try the secretions of a beaver anal gland to know that it tastes like vanilla? <laughs> who decided they want to smell monkey fart?" GT Junior saying, "What's up, babe?" But it smells so good, y'all. It smells so good. So. I don't know. Monkey business made me think of that. But that's cute. So we do have soap available. And I am. I haven't smelled monkey fire either. Look, y'all got to get it. Never heard of it either. Goodness gracious. Just look it up. It's a very, very pleasant smell. And if you purchase monkey fart, let me know what you think about it. It is an amazing smell. You'd be surprised. Yeah, I think, what is it, unicorn poop or something? It's crazy, but they smell so good. <laughs> oh, they had a beaver butt thing. We we done with that. We done with that. So I have my kombucha, my tea um, steeping. I'll take those tea bags out in a few minutes, and I'm going to let it sit. It's going to be some hours before it, it um, looks. <laughs> I never heard of monkey fight either. Oh my God! Y'all have to Google. Try Mr. Google Pants and um Google Monkey Fart. I think Bath, what is it called? Bath Body and Beyond or something like that. No, Body Works. I don't know the name of the store. I think it's Body Works. So now I gotta smell this Monkey Fart, and I'm telling you, G Mama Grows. Once you smell it. You ain't going to never go back. You're going to be like, oh, my God, I want candles. I used to always get candles and those um, melt monkey fart and unicorn food. <laughs> but all right, y'all. So I won't let my tea sit. Oh, I need to add sugar to it. So I'll add about a cup and a half of um, body works or bath and body works. Bath and body works sound right. I think that's it. Um, I'm going to add a cup and a half of sugar to it while it's hot. And then once it cools off, I'll pour it in here and cover it back up, set it back over there in my corner and let it do its thing. 
So the holidays are coming, y'all. The holidays are coming. So, you know, on Facebook, we've been playing with the holidays and throwing some ideas out there. Of course, you know, we got to make eggnog soon. Um, I want to make eggnog ice cream soon. So we'll be making that soon. I did make some, what were they? Frankenstein-ish. I got a scoby. I haven't started my kombucha yet. Come on, G Mama girl. You got this girl. Um, I made Frankenstein Rice Krispie treats the other day. Well, I ain't gonna say they were Frankenstein because they ain't look like Frankenstein. And the Rice Krispie treats look like they were rolling their eyes at me like this lady crazy. But <laughs> Monkey Pie, you haven't led us astray yet. So if you say try, we will. Monkey Fart it is. There you go, girl. Look, thank me later. Thank me later. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to be like, what in the world? This ain't no monkey. If a monkey fart smell like this, please. Look, like, free, please, why can't dog fart smell like that? Because when these dogs fart, they let the whole house know. We always like, what in the world? I was impressed with the photo of the Rice Krispie Treat. So, you know, I got to make Bobby snacks all the time. And I was trying to figure out what am I going to make him? And I wanted to make him something. Hey, Trisha. Um, I wanted to make him something with like a Halloween thing just because. So I said, oh, I'm going to make these Frankenstein Rice Krispie treats. So I made the Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> <laughs> but the Rice Krispie treats was rolling their eyes. They had an attitude, but they were good. Even the, especially the ones that I had decorated, they were real good because they had extra icing on them. When they had icing on them, they were real good. But I thought it was cute and funny. So we got Halloween decorations out the way. About a month ago, loved it. Now I'm determined to make my own. Farmer Marshall, definitely make your own. It is so easy. And I'll I'll put it in the video where I just talk about how. I make um, kombucha. Like I said, if you don't have a scoby and you need a scoby, hit me up. I do have scobies available. <laughs> um, but a couple people have asked me for a Christmas crack video. So we're going to definitely, you know, get people to scratch in for the season get this Christmas crack rolling, which, you know, all of these treats you can make anytime. The Rice Krispie treats. It doesn't have to be Halloween. It could be Thanksgiving. It could be Christmas. It could be a birthday or just because or whatever. But have fun with it. Christmas crack. You know, change the name. It ain't got to be Christmas crack for Halloween or Thanksgiving or just because or just call it crack because it's highly addictive. Highly addictive. So you definitely want to make that homemade eggnog. You definitely want to make that. All these things you want to think about. Feet loaf. Halloween coming up. I mean, some people got some pretty scary feet. But feet loaf is a thing. You should make it just because it's fun. So you got to keep things fun and exciting at home and um, or figure out how to. <laughs> We don't have we not we don't have too much of a shortage on that. So farmer Marshall, you definitely want to make your own kombucha because it's amazing. You can flavor it and make it your own. We flavor ours all the time. Wow, now I need a Scoby Hotel. Oh, I was gonna tell y'all. Somebody asked me about the job. So this um I think Louisa gave me this one. No, this one I got from Walmart, maybe. This is just <laughs> crack was whack. Man, it's cool, huh? I'm telling you, GT Junior. Cool. <laughs> this is actually just the drink container. I use it as my brewing vessel because we don't we don't use it. It was just sitting. I had kombucha one time, added elderberry syrup to it. Yeah. You can make it what you want once you make it at home. Um, but this container that I use for my Scobie Hotel, 
go to Sam's Club. Don't buy these things. They like $19 or something online or $30 online for one of these jugs. Um, this one I got from Luis. If you go to Sam's Club, especially if you eat um if you eat pickles, even if you don't, you can find something to do with those pickles. Get you a pickle job. A big job pickles is like five or six dollars. The purpose in it is not because of the pickles, but the jar that you need as a vessel. It's cheaper than buying it on Amazon. So I know I've been wanting to make my own. So making SCOBY is very easy. Now that I have learned how to make SCOBY, it's very easy. I was intimidated at first, but like I said, you can always start your own SCOBY. It's just like a gallon of tea and one of the one bottle of plain kombucha. You always want to make it with plain kombucha. Restaurant or places that serve food, ask them, ask if they have big jars. You can do that too. Someone who likes pickle, ask them to save the jar for you. Yep. But I would not pay all that money that Amazon asked for these jars. I would just, I'd rather pay $6 for some pickles. And, you know, you can make tons of things with those pickles. And then have a job, basically. And that's what I keep my scobies in. And you can actually use it as a brewing vessel too. So, you know, you don't have to use this big one that I use. You can use this one. So my freeze dryer is going crazy. Freeze drying cayenne <laughs> and hibiscus every week. So maybe if you go thrifting, you can find one. So thrifting, you can always find big, well, not always, but that's a good way to find a big jar is in a thrift store or somewhere. Yard sale, people always want to get rid of jars. So pick them up, pick them up. So if you want to purchase something, you have to email me because I am really slacking and dragging my feet on the website. Um, But I do have a list of things we have. Where do we go to order soap? Yeah, so just email me, Delphine, and um, I'll let you. I'll send you the list of things we have available. Um, Soil Family Expo, April fifth through the seventh, twenty twenty four. It's coming. So we're working on it. We will update the site soon. Um, Y'all know how that is. A lot of work. <laughs> I don't think I'd have a problem eating pickles like that. It may take a while. Hey, but I get her done. I know that's right, G-Mama girls. Freeze them. I think Bobby said he used to put a uh, Jolly Rancher or something in them in his um, pickles. I don't eat pickles like that, but you know, you can find some things to do with pickles, especially if you're going to get pickles and a jar. Versus just getting a job from Amazon and then it costs you like twenty, thirty dollars. I'd rather take the pickles, the job pickles, and give the pickles away if I have to. Freeze them, freeze dry them. Tons of things you can do with pickles. So, all right, y'all, I'm gonna get off here. Um, like I said, once my tea get to room fried pickles, there you go. I love fried pickles. They just so salty, but oh my god, fried pickles are good. Um, once my tea cool off, I will pour it in my brewing vessel and I'll cover it back up like this. I'll set it back in the corner out of the light for 10 days. Then in 10 days, I may go live and show y'all how I separate and bottle it up. But I was saying that I don't have to put a scoby in here. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I, I let him tell you when he come back. I don't have to put a scoby in here because I have some liquid from um, a kombucha and it'll create its own scoby. Or I can put a scoby in this brewing vessel and it'll it'll all do the same thing. So I'll let this sit. I won't touch it. I won't look at it. I won't put my hand in it, nothing for 10 days. And then I'll bottle it up. And the bottles I use are four ounce bottles. So 
you know, that's just one serving. Bobby can drink the whole thing. And when I bottle it up, I go ahead and flavor it and everything right then. Be done. Put some honey in it, and I'm done. And the next day, he can start drinking them as soon as they cool off. So, yeah. G Mama Grows, I think he said it's Jolly Rancher, and he just walked down the hall. And he's sticking in the pickle. Now, I know people used to put like a peppermint or something in a pickle and they would freeze it. And then they would eat it. But I don't I don't eat pickles like that. You know, you used to get the pickles, you used to go to the store to get the quarter pickles, and they would put them in the um, paper bag and the bag be all soggy and wet. <laughs> But everybody wanted those pickles. Everybody but me wanted that pickle, babe. So let's see what he um. Let me show y'all these labels while we're waiting on Bobby. Bobby's sister made these labels. Quita Brew Creates. So come tell them about your how you eat your pickles. Quita Brew Creates. She is on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Garden Signs. Look. What's up? Man. <laughs> <laughs> um man, since I was a kid, um the way I ate them was get like um a now later or a soft candy like that. And what it does is the pickle just kind of dissolves it a little bit and then you get a mixture of that sweet and sour. So depending on the kind of uh now later you get, you get a mixture of that. Green apple, watermelon, strawberry, whatever. Pineapple. Yeah, you know, uh, now leaders were a lot bigger back in the day. So, yeah. Now they like dime size. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, not to be nasty, you know, I just take and get my two of them and chew them up in my mouth to kind of get them mashed down, stick my finger down in the middle of the pickle, stick it down in there, and just kind of push it around. Feel like a mama bird. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, they say, "Hey, Bobby, what's up, y'all? What's up? What's up?" Fresh and I, I've been calling them Fresh and Fire all day, so I've been doing good. Frank, I always call y'all Fresh and Fit. Fresh and Fire said, "Hey, G Mama Grows, GT Junior." So, old oh boy, sweet and sour. Mm -hmm. Can't beat it. I think it's, it's amazing. Make me want to go get one now. <laughs> we ain't got no pickles. Bobby, what's up, bro? What up, what up? XDMC. XDMC now. What's up, bro? We use peppermint. So y'all XDMC um he is the creator of the Black, Black Tropical Homestead logo, intro, outro. <laughs> he the create and Soil Family Expo mm -hmm. logo. Don't forget. Don't forget. <laughs> yes. The off-grid trucker. What's up, Soil Family? So trucking. Yeah. Trucking ain't easy, y'all. But somebody <laughs> gotta do it. So I'm gonna get off here because we gotta go check on our new truck. <laughs> Bobby's new baby. He said he said, I'm gonna do better with this truck. We're gonna keep it clean on the inside. Right, babe? Yeah. He like, yeah, it's my truck. You stay out of it. And that's what I do. I stay out of it. So we love and appreciate y'all and Y'all already know how I end my lives, cuz we ain't got time to let nobody steal our joy. Y'all have a blessed day, and we shall see y'all in the next. Do I remember how to do this? Nope.